Before we get into editing the Kubrick theme, let's spend just a little bit of time here uh, getting oriented to the theme uh, to see how the theme is basically structured. The Kubrick theme is an image-based theme, and what I mean by that is that virtually everything that you see color-wise on the theme is made up of an image instead of uh, CSS, like most themes are. So when you're looking at the white writing area in the background of the page here, instead of that being defined by CSS, that's actually an image. The background, since it's a solid color, most themes would produce that through CSS, but in Kubrick that's an actual image. Uh, the header is an image, the footer is made up of an image, so it's all image based pretty much. Uh, so let's take a look and see what exactly I mean by that and see what those images are. If we look at the Kubrick theme in your default WordPress install, I'm just looking at blog 6 here, that's what this blog is. Uh, look at the themes and the default, and then in default there will be an images folder or directory. And that images directory contains the images that make up these elements. Uh, so now the Kubrick theme has changed a bit over the years, um, just a little bit. Uh, you might have noticed if you're using an earlier Kubrick theme, for example, the background behind your sidebar here is a light gray. And that's no longer the case in uh, Kubrick since, I don't know, maybe version 2.2 or 3 or something like that. And now it's all uh, white in the background. But let's look and see which one of these images make up these particular elements that you'll see in your theme. Uh, so here, for example, first off, the audio uh, image, uh, the only place that shows, to my knowledge, is uh, in your file uploads area when you upload an audio file, like an MP3, then that will show. And that image is actually looks like uh, this. Uh, then you have your uh, header image PHP, which we don't need to do any changes to. Uh, and then you come down, you have your background color, Kubrick BG color. The Kubrick background color does as the name implies, that's this, and it makes up the color of the background. Uh, if I were to come here just to see as an example, and I were to rename that, uh, which would just simulate deleting it essentially, I just don't want to delete it, and then come over here and refresh, watch what happens here when I refresh. Notice now that the background looks like it stayed the same, but it's actually a little bit darker. Uh, and you see this gray area here. Uh, and the reason that is, is all of these images made up in Kubrick, actually the width of the image of the header and your body that you write in and the footer as well, all incorporate that background color. So when I remove the background color from here, then the CSS that's in the theme actually takes over and produces this color. But this little part of the background that's going all the way around the Kubrick is still there. Uh, and that's there because Kubrick has sort of a depth or a drop shadow effect on it. So in order to have that, the background color has to be included in the uh, other elements. Uh, so that's no big deal. It's not a problem unless you want to try to change the background color. Uh, and then you may have one background color uh, here and then still have this little bit of gray unless you change that on the images. Uh, or unless you want to put, a, uh, for example, an image in the background instead of a color. So on this site, for example, I have an image that's repeating in the background, uh, but I left the uh, rest of the site the same so that I still get that sort of depth. So I have the repeating image here but you see that the background color, which is a part of the header and the body and all, is still there. So it makes it look like it's sort of on a, a mat or a piece of paper or something. Uh, now you can get that off if we look at another site to where I have a uh, background image. Uh, you can take that completely off. I've done a lot of customization. This is just Kubrick Customize. And I have the, the brick wall here as the background. Uh, and it runs right to the edges and stuff. So. Uh, I'll demonstrate both of these techniques in, in tutorials, but just to understand here that uh, background color, even though here, let's rename this and take it back, even though it looks like that same image runs right up to the edge of the white area, it really doesn't. Uh, that's actually incorporated in the other images. Okay, uh, so that's the background color. The 
uh, Kubrick BG LTR stands for left to right and RTL stands for right to left. You are probably never going to use either one of these. Uh, and uh, that's just LTR and RTL are uh, different ways that languages. You have the right to left languages or left to right languages. By default, the image that uh, uh, is used is the Kubrick BG wide image. And the Kubrick background wide image, if we look at it here, is an image that has just white all the way across and then the shadow and a little bit of background on either side. And so that Kubrick background wide image is the image that actually makes up the bulk of the writing area here. And I can show you that if we were to rename this so that it's no longer finding it and come over and refresh then you see what we're missing here. We're missing the entire center portion writing area essentially of your blog. Your footer is still there, uh, your header is still there, your background image is there, but the white area and the, the uh, center of the blog is gone when you don't have that. So I'll take and rename that to bring it back, refresh, and then you see how that pops back in. Okay. Uh, now the, uh, the left to right and right to left, again, uh, I'm not going to talk about those much, but um, those are, if we look at the images here, just to sort of show you, uh, those do produce, if you look here, left to right, right to left, the only difference between those two and the background wide is that they have that, still have that gray shadow in the background that used to be behind the sidebar on the left to right the gray shadow is on the right side on the right to left the gray shadow is on the left side and so you can set up your blog to use those uh, instead of the just a plain white all the way across with the Kubrick BG wide but by default neither one of these are used okay so um, we'll just leave that at that uh, footer uh, of course is going to make up your footer area here and the footer area in Kubrick has a uh, gradient sort of a gray gradient and we'll see how to change that in the future tutorial but uh, let me just show you if you're missing the footer image then essentially what you get is this and instead of the image then the background color that's defined in the theme takes the place it doesn't look all that great you don't have rounded but you see here how the gray sort of stretches beyond again the writing paper that's because all of the images here do go into that background so right click rename take that off and now you see your footer is nice rounded with the gradient and then of course the header uh, if the header image is missing then this is what you're going to see and you see the blue because that's defined in the CSS uh, if the header's not there then you just see the big blue area uh, again you can clearly see here how the header is actually wider than it looks uh, when you're looking at it uh, with the image so rename the image get it back in place and you'll see that the header comes back into place so this white here and a bit of the gray is part of the header on both sides and the top uh, as well all the way around. In summary the images that we're going to be working with to customize the um, Kubrick theme here will be the um, background color, uh, Kubrick BG wide, footer, and header. So in the next tutorial we'll look at how to edit those images in Photoshop.